NCLEX practice exam for medical surgical nursing 2. Question 1. A female client is admitted with the diagnosis of acute renal failure. She is awake, alert, oriented and complaining of severe back pain, nausea and vomiting and abdominal cramps. Her vital signs are blood pressure 170th mm Hg, pulse 110, respirations 30, and oral temperature 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit 38 degrees Celsius. Her electrolytes are sodium 120 mcl, potassium 5.2 mcl. Her urinary output for the first 8 hours is 50 milliliters. The client is displaying signs of which electrolyte imbalance? A. Hyponatremia. B. Hypokalemia. C. Hypophosphatemia. D. Hypocalcemia. Answer A hyponatremia. The normal serum sodium level is 135 to 145 mcl. The client's serum sodium is below normal. Hyponatremia also manifests itself with abdominal cramps and nausea and vomiting. Question 2. Assessing the laboratory findings, which result would the nurse most likely expect to find in a client with chronic renal failure? A. Ben 10 to 30 mg slash DL, potassium 4.0 mcl, creatinine 0.5 to 1.5 mg slash DL. B. Decreased serum calcium, blood pH 7.2, potassium 6.5 mcl. C. Ben 15 mg slash DL, increased serum calcium, creatinine L. 0 mg slash DL D. Ben 35 to 40 mg slash DL, potassium 3.5 mg L, pH 7.35, decreased serum calcium. NCLEX practice exam for medical surgery. Question 1. A female client is admitted with a diagnosis of acute renal failure. She is awake, alert, oriented, and complaining of severe back pain, nausea and vomiting and abdominal cramps. Her vital signs are blood pressure 170th mm Hg, pulse 110, respirations 30, and oral temperature 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit 38 degrees Celsius. Her electrolytes are sodium... <laughs> Answer. B. Avoid taking blood pressure measurements or blood samples from the affected arm. In the client with an external shunt, don't use the arm with a vascular access site to take blood pressure readings, draw blood, insert four lines, or give injections because these procedures may rupture the shunt or occlude blood flow causing damage and obstructions in the shunt. Question 2. Assessing the laboratory findings, which result would the nurse most likely expect to find in a client with chronic renal failure? A. Ben 10 to 30 mg slash DL, potassium 4.0 mcl, creatinine 0.5 to 1.5 mg slash DL. B. Decreased serum calcium, blood pH 7.2. Potassium 6.5 mcl. C. Bun 15 mg slash DL. Increased serum calcium, creatinine L. 
zero milligrams slash DL. Answer. The he will be pain free. Surgical interventions involve an experience of pain for the client, which can come in varying degrees. Telling the pain that he will be pain free is giving him false reassurance. Answer, B. Avoid taking blood pressure. Me Question 2. Assessing the laboratory findings, which result would the nurse most likely expect to find in a client with chronic renal failure? A. 10 to 30 milligrams. <laughs> Answer, the he will be pain free. Answer, a telling him to avoid heavy lifting for four to six weeks. The client should avoid lifting heavy objects and any strenuous activity for four to six weeks after surgery to prevent stress on the inguinal area. There is no special diet required. The fluid intake of eight glasses a day is good advice but is not a priority in this case. Question 7. A 30-year-old homemaker fell asleep while smoking a cigarette. She sustained severe burns of the face, neck, anterior chest, and both arms and hands. Using the rule of nines, which is the best estimate of total body surface you burned? A. 18%. B. 22%. C. 31%. D. 40%. Question 1. A female client is admitted with a diagnosis of acute renal failure. She is awake, alert, oriented, and complaining of severe back pain, nausea and vomiting and abdominal cramps. Her vital signs are blood pressure 170 mm Hg, pulse 110, respirations 30, and oral temperature 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit 38 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Answer, D. Fluid shift from intravascular space to the interstitial space. This period is the burn shock stage or the hypovolemic phase. Tissue injury causes vasodilation that results in increased capillary permeability making fluids shift from the intravascular to the interstitial space. This can lead to a decrease in circulating blood volume or hypovolemia which decreases renal perfusion and urine output. Question 9. If a client has severe bums on the upper torso, which item would be a primary concern? A. Debriding and covering the wounds. B. Administering antibiotics. C. Frequently observing the hoarseness. Stridor and dyspnea. D. Establishing a patent four line for fluid replacement.
Question 1. A female client is admitted with the diagnosis of acute renal failure. She is awake, alert, oriented and complaining of severe back pain, nausea and vomiting and abdominal cramps. Her vital signs are blood pressure 170th mm Hg, pulse 110, respirations 30 and oral temperature 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit 38 degrees Celsius. Question 10. Contractures are among the most serious long-term complications of severe burns. If a burn is located on the upper torso, which nursing measure would be least effective to help prevent contractures? A. Changing the location of the bed or the TV set, or both, daily. B. Encouraging the client to chew gum and blow up balloons. C. Avoiding the use of a pillow for sleep, or placing the head in a position of hyperextension. D. Helping the client to rest in the position of maximal comfort. Answer. D. Helping the client to rest in the position of maximal comfort. Mobility and placing the burned areas in their functional position can help prevent contracture deformities related to burns. Pain can immobilize a client as he seeks the position where he finds less pain and provides maximal comfort. But this approach can lead to contracture deformities and other complications. Question 11. An adult is receiving total parenteral nutrition TPN. Which of the following assessment is essential? A. Evaluation of the peripheral foresight. B. Confirmation that the tube is in the stomach. C. Assess the bowel sound. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Answer. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Total parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrients to the body by and for root. The admixture is made up of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, electrolytes, vitamins, trace minerals and sterile water based on individual client needs. It is intended to improve the client's nutritional status. Because of its composition, it is important to monitor the client's fluid intake and output including electrolytes, blood glucose and weight. Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. B. Polystyrene sulfonate caxolate. C. Calcium glucomide. D. Aluminium hydroxide. Answer. D. Helping the client to rest. Question 11. An adult is receiving total parenteral nutrition TPN. Which of the following assessment is essential? A. Evaluation of the peripheral foresight. B. Confirmation that the tube is in the stomach. Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. B. Polystyrene sulfonate caxolate. C. Calcium glucomide. D. Aluminium hydroxide. Answer. D. Helping the client to rest in the position of maximal comfort. 
mobility and placing the burned areas in their functional position can help prevent contracture deformities related to burns. Pain can immobilize a client as he seeks the position where he finds less pain and provides maximal comfort. But this approach can lead to contracture deformities and other Answer A hypertension In hypovolemia, one of the compensatory mechanisms is activation of the sympathetic nervous system that increases the RR and PR and helps restore the BP to maintain tissue perfusion but not cause a hypertension. The SNS stimulation constricts renal arterioles that increases release of aldosterone, decreases glomerular filtration and increases sodium and water reabsorption that leads to oligria. Question 12. Which drug would be le Answer. D. Helping the client to rest in the position of maximal comfort. Mobility and placing the burned areas in their functional position can help prevent contracture deformities related to burns. Pain can immobilize a client as he seeks the position where he finds less pain. Question 16. Maria refuses to acknowledge that her breast was removed. She believes that her breast is intact under the dressing. The nurse should a. Call the MD to change the dressing so Kathy can see the incision. b. Recognize that Kathy is experiencing denial, a normal stage of the grieving process. c. Reinforce Kathy's belief for several days until her body can adjust to stress of surgery. d. Remind Kathy that she needs to accept her diagnosis so that she can begin rehabilitation exercises. Question 11. An adult is re- Answer. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Total parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrients to the body by and for root. The admixture is made up of proteins, carbohydrates, fat electrolytes, vitamins, trace minerals and sterile water based on individual client needs. It is intended to improve the client's nutritional status. Because Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. B. Polystyrene sulfonate caxalate. C. Calcium glucomide. D. Aluminium hydroxide. Answer. B. It affects both normal and tumor cells. Chemotherapeutic agents are given to destroy the actively proliferating cancer cells. But these agents cannot differentiate the abnormal actively proliferating cancer cells from those that are actively proliferating normal cells like the cells of the bone marrow, thus the effect of bone marrow depression. Question 11. An adult is receiving total parenteral nutrition TPN. Which of the following assessment is essential? A. Evaluation of the peripheral foresight. B. Confirmation that the tube is in the stomach. C. Assess the bowel sound. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring.
Answer. D. Fluid and electrolyte mon. Answer. Sichtskening uses magnetic fields and radio frequencies to provide cross-sectional view of DUMA. CT scan uses narrow beam X-ray to provide cross-sectional view. MRI uses magnetic fields and radio frequencies to detect DUMAs. Question 19. A post-operative complication of mastectomy is lymphedema. This can be prevented by A. Ensuring patency of wound drainage tube. B. Placing the arm on the affected side in a dependent position. C. Restricting movement of the affected arm. D. Frequently elevating the arm of the affected side above the level of the heart. Question 11. An adult is receiving total parenteral nutrition TPN. Which of the following assessment is essential? A. Evaluation of the peripheral foresight. B. Confirmation that the tube is in the answer. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Total parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrients to the body by in four root. The admixture is made up of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, electrolytes, vitamins, trace minerals and sterile water based on individual client needs. It is intended to improve the client's nutritional status. Because of its composition, it is important to monitor the client's fluid intake and output including electrolytes, blood glucose and weight. Question 19. A post-operative complication of mastectomy is lymphedema. This can be prevented by A. Ensuring patency of wound drainage tube. B. Placing the arm on the affected side in a dependent position. C. Restricting movement of the affected arm. D. Frequently elevating the arm of the affected side. Question 21. High uric acid levels may develop in clients who are receiving chemotherapy. This is caused by A. The inability of the kidneys to excrete the drug metabolites. B. Rapid cell catabolism. C. Toxic effect of the antibiotic that are given concurrently. D. The altered blood pH from the acid medium of the drugs. Question 11. An adult is re- Question 16. Maria refuses to acknowledge that her breast was removed. She believes that her breast is intact under the dressing. The nurse should A. Call the MD to change the dressing so Kathy can see the incision. B. Recognize that Kathy is experiencing denial, a normal stage of the grieving process. C. Reinforce Kathy's belief for several days until her body can adjust to stress of surgery. D. Remind Kathy that she needs question 22. Which of the following interventions would be included in the care of plan in a client with cervical implant? A. Frequent ambulation. B. Unlimited visitors. C. Low residue diet. D. Vaginal irrigation every shift. Answer. D. Helping the client to rest. Question 21. High uric acid levels may develop in clients who are receiving chemotherapy. This is caused by A. The inability of the kidneys to excrete the drug metabolites. B. Rapid cell catabolism. C. Toxic effect of the antibiotic that are given concurrently. D. The altered blood pH from the acid medium. Of Question 11. An adult is receiving total parenteral nutrition TPN. Which of the following assessment is essential? A. Evaluation of the peripheral foresight. B. 
confirmation that the tube is in the stomach. C. Assess the bowel sound. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Question 16. Maria refuses. Question 22. Which of the following interventions would be included in the care of plant in a client with cervical implant? A. Frequent ambulation. B. Unlimited visitors. C. Low residue diet. D. Vaginal irrigation. F. Question 24. A client suffering from acute renal failure has an unexpected increase in urinary output to 150 milliliters per hour. The nurse assesses that the client has entered the second phase of acute renal failure. Nursing actions throughout this phase include observation for signs and symptoms of A. Hypovolemia, hypokalemia, and hyponatremia. B. Hypovolemia. Hyperkalemia and hyponatremia. C. Hypervolemia, wide fluctuations in serum sodium and potassium levels. D. Hypervolemia, no fluctuation in serum sodium and potassium levels. <laughs>. The second phase of ARF is the diuretic phase or high output phase. The diuresis can result in an output of up to 10 liters slash day of dilute urine. Loss of fluids and electrolytes occur. Question 25. An adult has just been brought in by ambulance after a motor vehicle accident. When assessing the client, the nurse would expect which of the following manifestations could have resulted from sympathetic nervous system stimulation. A. A rapid pulse and increased ARA. B. Decreased physiologic functioning. C. Rigid posture and altered perceptual focus. D. Increased awareness and attention. <laughs> Answer, the rapid pulse and increased error. The fight-or-flight reaction of the sympathetic nervous system occurs during stress like in a motor vehicular accident. This is manifested by increased in cardiovascular function and ARA to provide the immediate needs of the body for survival. Answer, C. Hypervolemia, white. Answer, C. Scanning uses magnetic fields and radio frequencies to provide cross-sectional view of Duma. CT scan uses narrow beam X-ray to provide cross-sectional view. MRI uses magnetic fields and radio frequencies to detect Dumas. Answer, D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Total parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrients to the body by N4 root. The admixture is made up of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, electrolytes, vitamins, trace minerals and sterile water based on individual client needs. It is intended to improve the client's nutritional status. Because of its composition, it is important to monitor the client's fluid intake and output including Question 19. A post-operative complication of mastectomy is lymphedema. 
This can be prevented by A. Ensuring patency of wound drainage tube B. Placing the arm on the affected side in a dependent position C. Restricting movement of the affected arm D. Frequently elevating the arm of the affected side above the level of the heart Question 25. An adult. Answer. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Total parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrients to the body by in four root. The admixture is made up of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, electrolytes, vitamins, trace minerals and sterile water based on individual client needs. It is intended to improve the client's nutritional status. Be Question 29. Intervention for a PT who has swallowed a muriatic acid includes all of the following except A. Administering an irritant that will stimulate vomiting. B. Aspirating secretions from the pharynx if respirations are affected. C. Neutralizing the chemical. D. Washing the esophagus with large volumes of water via gastric lavage. Answer. A. Hypertension. In hy Answer. Administering an irritant that will stimulate vomiting. Swallowing of corrosive substances causes severe irritation and tissue destruction of the mucous membrane of the GI tract. Measures are taken to immediately remove the toxin or reduce its absorption. For corrosive poison ingestion, such as in muriatic acid where burn or perforation of the mucosa may occur, gastric emptying procedure is immediately instituted. This includes gastric lavage and the administration of activated charcoal to absorb the poison. Administering an irritant with a concomitant vomiting to remove the swallowed poison will further cause irritation and damage to the mucosal lining of the digestive tract. Vomiting is only indicated when non-corrosive poison is swallowed. Question 30. Which initial nursing assessment finding would best indicate that a client has been successfully resuscitated after a cardiorespiratory arrest? A skin warm and dry b pupils equal and react delight c palpable carotid pulse d positive barbinsky's reflex answer d fluid and electrolyte mon question 22 which of the following interventions would be included in the care of plan in a client with cervical implant a Frequent ambulation. B. Unlimited visitors. C. Low residue diet. D. Vaginal irrigation every shift. Question 31. Chemical burn of the eye are treated with A. Local anesthetics and antibacterial drops for 24 to 36 hours. B. Hot compresses applied at 15 minute intervals. C. Flushing of the lids, conjunctiva, and cornea with tap or preferably sterile water. D. Cleansing the conjunctiva with a small cotton tipped applicator. Answer. A. Hypertension. In hy Answer. C. Flushing of the lids.
conjunctiva and cornea with tap or preferably sterile water. Prompt treatment of ocular chemical burns is important to prevent further damage. Immediate tap water irrigation should be started on site even before transporting the patient to the nearest hospital facility. In the hospital, copious irrigation with normal saline, installation of local anesthetic and antibiotic is done. Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. B. Polystyrene sulfonate caxolate. C. Calcium glucomide. D. Aluminium hydroxide. Answer. D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Total parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrients to the body by and for root. The admixture is made up of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, electrolytes, vitamins, trace minerals and sterile water base. Answer. A. Hypertension. In hypovolemia, one of the compensatory mechanisms is activation of the sympathetic nervous system that increases the RR and PR and helps restore the BP to maintain tissue perfusion but not cause a hypertension. The SNS stimulation constricts renal arterioles that increases release of aldosterone, decreases glomerular filtration and increases sodium and water reabsorption that leads to oligria. Answer. C. Flushing of the lids. Answer. B. Speak to both parents together and encourage them to support each other and express their emotions freely. Sudden death of a family member creates a state of shock on the family. They go into a stage of denial and anger in their grieving. Assisting them with information they need to know. Answering their questions and listening to them will provide the needed support for them to move on and be of support to one another. Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. B. Polystyrene sulfonate caxolate. C. Calcium glucomide. D. Aluminium hydroxide. Question 30. Which initial nursing? Question 29. Intervention for a PT. Who has swallowed a muriatic acid includes all of the following except A. Administering an irritant that will stimulate vomiting. B. Aspirating secretions from the pharynx if respirations are affected. C. Neutralizing the chemical. Question 25. An adult has just been brought in by ambulance after a motor vehicle accident. When assessing the client, the nurse would expect which of the following manifestations could have resulted from sympathetic nervous system stimulation. A. A rapid pulse and increased error. B. Decreased physiologic functioning. C. Rigid posture and altered perception. <laughs> Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. B. Polystyrene sulfonate caxolate. C. Calcium glucomide. Question 30. Which initial nursing assessment finding would best indicate that a client has been successfully resuscitated after a cardiorespiratory arrest? A. Skin warm and dry. B. Pupils equal and react delight. C. Palpable carotid pulse. D. Positive Barbinsky's reflex.
Question 29. Intervention. Question 25. An adult has just been brought in by ambulance after a motor vehicle accident. When assessing the client, the nurse would expect which of the following manifestations could have resulted from sympathetic nervous system stimulation. A. A rapid pulse and increased ARA. B. Decreased physiologic functioning. C. Rigid posture and altered perceptual focus. D. Question 37. Which of the following activities is not encouraged in a patient after a nice surgery? A. Sneezing, coughing and blowing the nose. B. Straining to have a bowel movement. C. Wearing tight shirt collars. D. Sexual intercourse. Answer. D. Fluid shift from intravascular. Question 29. Intervention for a PT. Who has swallowed a muriatic acid includes all of the following except. A. Administering an irritant that will stimulate vomiting. B. Aspirating secretions from the pharynx if respirations are affected. C. Neutralizing the chemical. D. Washing the esophagus with large volumes of water via gastric lavage. Question 30. Which initial nursing? Answer. A. Hypertension. In hypovolemia. One of the compensatory mechanisms is activation of the sympathetic nervous system that increases the RR and PR and helps restore the BP to maintain tissue perfusion but not cause a hypertension. Answer. D. Fluid shift from intravascular space to the interstitial space. This period is the burn shock stage or the hypovolemic phase. Tissue injury causes vasodilation that results in increased capillary permeability making fluids shift from the intravascular to the interstitial space. This can lead to a decrease in circulating blood volume or hypovolemia which decreases renal perfusion and urine output. Question 29. Intervention for a PT. Who has swallowed a muriatic acid includes all of the following except. A. Administering an irritant that will stimulate vomiting. B. Aspirating secretions from the pharynx if respirations are affected. C. Neutralizing the chemical. Question 30. Which initial nursing assessment finding would best indicate that a client has been successfully resuscitated after a cardiorespiratory arrest? A. Skin warm and dry. B. Pupils equal and react delight. C. Palpable carotid pulse. D. Positive Barbinsky's reflex. Answer. A. Hypertension. In hyp... Answer. D. Fluid shift from intravascular space to the interstitial space. This period is the burn shock stage or the hypovolemic phase. Tissue injury causes vasodilation that results in increased capillary permeability making fluids shift from the intravascular to the interstitial space. This can lead to a decrease in circulating blood volume or hypovolemia which decreases renal perfusion and urine output.
Question 12. Which drug would be... Question 42. Which is irrelevant in the pharmacologic management of a client with CVA? A. Osmotic diuretics and corticosteroids are given to decrease cerebral edema. B. Anticonvulsants are given to prevent seizures. C. Thrombolytics are most useful within three hours of an occlusive CVA. D. Aspirin is used in the acute management of a completed stroke. Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. B. Polystyrene sulfonate caxalate. C. Calcium glucomide. D. Aluminium hydroxide. Answer, D. Helping the client to rest. Question 25. An adult has just been brought in by ambulance after a motor vehicle accident. When assessing the client, the nurse would expect which of the following manifestations could have resulted from sympathetic nervous system stimulation. A. A rapid pulse and increased ARA. B. Decreased physiologic functioning. C. Rigid posture and altered perceptual question 37. Which of the following activities is not encouraged in a patient after a night nice surgery? A. Sneezing, coughing and blowing the nose. B. Straining to have a bowel movement. C. Wearing tight shirt collars. D. Sexual intercourse. Answer, D. Fluid and electrolyte monitoring. Total parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrients to the body by in four root. The admixture is made up of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, electrolytes, vitamins, trace minerals and sterile water. Answer, C. Hypovolemia, wide fluctuations in serum sodium and potassium levels. Dot the second phase of ARF is the diuretic phase or high output phase. The diuresis can result in an output of up to 10 liters slash day of dilute urine. Loss of fluids and electrolytes occur. Answer, D fluid shift from intravascular. Answer, A hypertension. In hypovolemia. One of the compensatory mechanisms is activation of the sympathetic nervous system that increases the RR and PR and helps restore the BP to maintain tissue perfusion but not cause a hypertension. The SNS stimulation constricts renal arterioles that increases release of aldosterone, decreases glomerular filtration and increases sodium and water reabsorption that leads to oligria. Question 12. Which drug would be least effective in lowering a client's serum potassium level? A. Glucose and insulin. 
B. Polystyrene sulfonate cagsulate. C. Calcium glucomide. D. Aluminium hydroxide. Answer. D. Fluid and electrolyte mon. Answer. C. Hypovolemia. White fluctuations in serum sodium and potassium levels. Dot the second phase of ARF is the diuretic phase or high output phase. The diuresis can result in an output of up to 10. <laughs>
keep a pillow under the client's head as needed for comfort. Answer C. Hypovolemia. White. Answer B. Before law growling, remove the pillow from under the client's head and use no pillows between the client's legs. Following a laminectomy and spinal fusion, it is important that the back of the patient be maintained in straight alignment and to support the entire vertebral column to promote complete healing. Question 37. Which of the following activities is not in